our first meetup. Last time a colleague of mine was here and we mentioned this would be a great opportunity and a platform to share what we have worked with. So I'm here presenting our project, we call it Gashi Robotics Simulation Project, also known as Robots in the Metaverse because it sounds pretty internally. And um, so this is a project we started last year in the summer, kind of as an R&D project to test out some robotic simulation. So, first a quick introduction, because most of you probably know Accenture coming from the consultant space. We mostly did IT consulting until like 2000, and, but from there on out we started moving a lot into the engineering consulting business. And in the last few years we've even started more into the innovation business, and I'm part of the next generation robotics team. So we basically focus around everything that is called innovative by us, of course, innovation is a bit of question of definition, but everything that is outside the traditional manufacturing environment, so a bit of a parallel to what was just presented, everything that gets out of the industrial cages and tries to venture a bit more into the unstructured world. So for this, we believe that these robots in the wild uh, have to have special kind of capabilities that are, for example, able to share our spaces like the mobile vacuum cleaners, our interfaces like the spot from the awesome dynamics with this fancy arm that opens doors and also communicate with us. Because of that, we focus on six major topics within our department. So robotic inspection, the first one where we use drones, AGVs, rovers, whatever, to inspect dangerous <coughs> environments. Uh, regional robotics, with the rise of dark factories, there's also the rise of dark, <coughs> sorry, dark stores. So we focus a bit also into that direction. And uh, robot, robotic virtualization, so a bit what you're going to see right now, where we focus a lot on simulation and virtualizing environments. And uh, mobile robotics, so combining AMR, AGVs with sleep management systems, not in traditional industry environments, but everything outside of it. Payload systems, so whatever you want to build on top of the robot is kind of custom, uh, a lot in connection with robotic inspection. And lastly, custom, custom robotic solutions, so everything that kind of sounds innovative, uh, we take a look at it. And if it's something that we think we can tackle, then we will. So a bit of motivation behind this project is that before the summer we were looking to possibilities to do raw space robotic simulation that allowed for interoperability, so a lot of different robotic vendors, scalability, so we could have 20, 50 robots, and also adaptability, so if we want to have a new robot, it's easy to plug and play. And we kind of looked at a lot of different options and decided to create our own kind of test bed for this. That it's integrated also with the CSV pipeline and then also deployment on the cloud and clay in case I don't have a really high-end computer to simulate this all really pretty. And therefore we decided at the time on a combination of AWS RoboMaker for the cloud, ROS2 for the ROS backend. Specifically in this case we went with Foxy. And also with the Unity Robotics Hub for those who are not uh, <laughs> aware of what it is, it's basically a Unity plugin that allows you to connect with ROS. And why did we choose all these technologies? We could have went with just normal vendor specific robotic simulation, but then we would be tied into that vendor. We could have also went with, for example, Gazebo, which is also a really good simulator, but then we don't have the photorealistic capability that Unity offers us natively. Or we could have also went with Unreal Engine or even the Video Omniverse, but at the time we felt that Unity was probably the best <coughs> choice for us. And, oh, sorry. So basically we wanted to make this simple. The whole uh, simulation, deployment, CICD, and we wanted to have interoperability, scalability, and adaptability. And what can the user do in this simulation environment that we tried to create? He can visualize and control simulated and real robots. He can control the robots with direct control, so my joystick, and share control tower operations. <laughs> He can switch between real robots and simulated robots easily, and he can upload the simulation to AWS RoboMaker because not all computers are really powerful, and personal experience, it crashed my computer a lot of times, so really cool feature. And we just wanted to, the first stage, we wanted the user to have a simple user flow. So opening Unity, choosing robot, seeing the robot state, so a bit like you having a Z, you can see how it's looking at the point in time, and then choose between shared control and direct control, then that gets pushed out of uh, Unity into ROS. ROS2 is whatever planning, path planning, motion planning. And then a simulated or a real robot takes over and reads that information. This can all then be dockerized and sent into AWS Robot. 
I'm going to go over here. Try to show you a bit of how it looks like. So uh, this is our Gashu Innovation Center. We have a small innovation center there where clients can visit, and we also develop our own solutions. And this year, probably all of you know, this is Arvis. It's a slam map. I just overlaid it to make it a bit more visual. And that is one of the two robots we decided to integrate in the summer because it's out of the box. Everyone has worked with the turtle bot really easy. So the user can normally decide between the turtle bot and the panda. And here he has decided to move it with direct control teleportation. So you can just WSD, move the robot back and forth. You can already see this is a simulated robot. We can see the simulated wire, so it acts a bit like you would expect from Gazebo or an Arvis, like a bit of a combination from both. You can move it around. You can then decide, okay, I want to do a bit of shared control. So I need to localize the robot. I can just localize it, and you can see it's already acting on in our slam map. And then I can give it coordinates and say, okay, go from A to B, move, move around. And it will perform the navigation. And the same applies for our front arm. So in this case, you can see this is a real front arm, not a simulated one. Here we have our lab front arm. Here we have our movement environment. And there you see the real robot is the white one. So it's syncing up to the real robot. And the blue one is the ghost. So basically what we use to set our targets. And here, there's already, I think, two preset waypoints. And I'm setting the third one. And the robot will just follow the waypoint. This is proving the concept that we can do the connection and we can switch between robots actively. So the list you see there on the right is just three test robots. I could have ten. It's just copying and pasting because we did this in a modern way. <coughs> Sorry. Then we put all of this into AWS RoboMaker. So for those who don't know, AWS RoboMaker is a platform that allows you to simulate the Zeebo in the AWS Cloud. And what we did is we put Unity there too so that we can run all our simulations there really easily. So as part of the CICD pipeline, whenever I push a commit, it updates and sends there. So it's really helpful for a lot of our developers because we work in a really global team, so this was really helpful for us. <coughs> now, how does the software architecture look like? Uh, it has three main components. So you have ROS, Unity, and the cloud. Um, ROS and Unity, the connections done between the Unity Unity Robotics Hub with the ROS CCP bridge. And what we did is we standardized basically the topics that are, that are exchanged between them. So from Unity to ROS, you send it to the, the command topics. And we just have one type, which then gets processed by a relay node and decomposed into whatever we tell it to do. So if it's shared control, it's going to go into the nodes. If it's direct control, it just passes on to, for example, CMD Val, which for most mobile robots is what you take as input. And it gets read either by the, our real robots on the site or by the simulated ones in Unity. We don't care, we just publish it and one of the robots can be listed. Then on the top part, we have our CICD pipeline. Basically, we create images automatically whenever it builds correctly from ROS image and the Unity image, put them in the ECR instance, and then it gets deployed out to RoboMaker. And it's really good that we have really like multi uh, course team doing this because I worked mostly on the Unity and ROS side. I didn't have a clue how Docker worked. And there were a couple of colleagues that helped us and it really brought out the power of having the CXCD pipeline behind this because it really automated all of our testing. And one thing we really wanted for this project was to have multi-robot communication. So it's, if we can just have one turtle bot or one front arm, it's gonna, not going to help us a lot because we want to be able to expand it and test in a lot of ways. And unfortunately, the Unity Robotics Hub, when we started tackling this, didn't allow for five different turtle bots or three different computers publishing to the same Unity instance. So we have to re had to rewrite the Unity connector to allow for multiple ROS connectors. And in the end, what we did is basically we containerized each robot in a way that on the Unity side, each robot has a specific connector, so an IP address to which it connects. And then on the ROS side, we just put each robot in its own domain to separate the topics. Uh, leaving in a lot of uh, having to namespace everything, which at the time in Ross Foxy wasn't that easy to do. So with this, we have a really like modular architecture where you can just copy and paste this eternally, and you will have a test on my PC. And until 15 turtle bots in use, it worked. I didn't have a use for it <laughs> at the time, but we managed to have a really replicable, which was really good. Uh, what did we learned from this? Well, the combination Unity Robotics on Ross 2 with the Robomaker 
really interesting combination. At the time, we had a lot of discussions which Ralph's version to use. We went with Foxy for a couple of reasons. Uh, our team felt that we were, hadn't been working on the Wedic until then. It's really good, but we wanted to move on to Ralph's 2 because of the whole security constraints. But we didn't feel that Humble was ready because it was also a bit unstable at the time and it didn't support the Panda ARM packages that we required for our two test robots. And also, name spacing was not available at the time. It was a big problem that we encountered, but we then found a way to go around it. Unity Robotics Hub, for those who don't know it, it's a great boilerplate for creating ROS packages, uh, ROS projects with Unity. It has a variety of core modules like visualizers for sensors, the ROS connectors, and everything else that really enables you to create a good simulation. But it was not ready out of the box to have multiple ROS CCD connectors, so that uh, we had to do a lot of tweaking. I think now there's even a branch that allows you to do this, which is really good. And, and also, lastly, it's been missing a lot of out-of-the-box functionalities that are now, for example, available with NVIDIA i6 SIMP. I don't know if everyone knows this data bit, but they released, I think, two months back, an official uh, new version, which is much more stable than it was in the summer. And it offers some out-of-the-box functionalities that are really interesting. Lastly, AWS RoboMaker. It's a great platform to deploy your simulations if there is no high-power computer there for you to work with. But the pre-work to host Unity there is really big. So at the time there was no documentation. I think now they have a couple of webinars, but still it's a bit of a overhead. Also, a lot of the features available for Gazebo, because it's natively created for Gazebo, are not available for Unity, so you have to build them yourself. And lastly, it's great to integrate it into a CICD pipeline. It really helps you automate your ROS testing and everything. I just learned the hard way. It's really important to have stage built on your Docker, because this will really decrease the time you need to build everything. Um, so we right now built this boilerplate because we want to, like throughout Accenture, be able to have like simulations running everywhere and really have one architecture and one way to do it so that we can do use cases like AI robotic training for pick and place or graph neural networks or CNNs and that's why we have photorealism. We want to be able to test multi-robot interaction planning so that we can have a variety of different robots all interacting with each other in simulation. We want to deploy scalability testing, so I have my software, I want to test it on 50 different robots, I can just set it to AWS RoboMaker. And scenario testing, so just have it part of our DevOps pipeline and testing it on the different warehouse arrangements or something. <coughs> Lastly, we're also now looking into doing an Omniverse extension of this. So since Omniverse, specifically at 6 has now reached the maturity grade where we think it might be interesting to look into, uh, I've been basically putting what we did in Unity into Omniverse, and you can see there's just a comparison of the rendering. Omniverse, of course, with the RTX rendering, looks really, really impressive, which might be really good for photorealistic simulation. If you want to do like synthetic data capturing to train whatever machine learning algorithms you have. And then you can leverage a lot of these options, which we're, we're also actively looking into. Uh, so yeah, this has been my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to, to me now for email or LinkedIn at the end of the presentation. And thank you a lot. So there is a room for questions if you, any of the audience have a question. I was wondering what namespacing, you said that proxy doesn't have namespacing. What do you mean by that? Because topics have namespaces, right? So at the time, uh, on the really, really raw backbone parts, I didn't work necessarily, but what I got from my developers is that this was summer 2022. So they had a lot of issues like differentiating the topics from each other when they reached the topics reached uh, the Unity side. So basically, from what I understand, namespacing of everything wasn't possible because we really needed everything to be to have different topic names. And I know that then for the turtle box, or even, I have some colleagues working actively on the namespacing of the turtle bot specifically. So I know that for Foxy at the time, it wasn't really a possibility, but I might also have, like, there might be another inherent problem with the naming that isn't so, that I'm not aware of right now, but at least this is what I remember. But let's talk about the presentation if, you, if there is. I would be really interested in knowing more. Thank so, you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So have you tested your solution with ROS2 infrastructure? I mean, because so far it was ROS1, and the problem that you mentioned was uh, actually coming from ROS1, that it's not scalable, you need to hack some connections. But since ROS2 has 
self-discovery, right? It's data centric. Mm -hmm. Maybe it can solve your. So this was done in Rust to Foxy. So everything was Rust to. This is everything is Rust to Foxy. So then, what was the I mean the main bottleneck here? Because maybe then the, the what? The bottleneck of scalability. That we tried to. Then the, our initial like problem when we were deploying this on a computer, the scalability is that the computer can't handle the amount of data. So like if you're running, if I'm running my simulation here or even on my laptop, which is a like pretty good laptop you're going to encounter a limit on how much you can use. And on RoboMaker, you can use up to a million cores in the simulation. So that's really what we wanted to because a lot of the times, we just don't want to simulate one or two robots. We want to train entire, for example, graph neural network on 2,000 panda arms because it just decreases the amount of time you need to do it. And if I try to deploy it on my PC, we'll fry it. Yes. And I want to scale it, and that's why we have the, like, the cloud there. And I'm not a cloud expert. I've got to work in Accenture, and we have a lot of people to do it. And because then I can push it into a like, Docker container, into a RoboMaker, and run it there. So that, that's the issue of scalability. Scalability wasn't doable on our computers. Okay. That's why we went with RoboMaker. And the second question is the physics engine. So you are using the native Yeah, we're using the native one. Uh, at the time, we had uh, some discussion among our. We, we were, the team was uh, we were seven, so it was two people doing ROS, and two people doing Unity, uh, one 3D designer. You, you didn't see it, but so here it yeah. looks pretty at least yeah. <laughs> because the intention is that we also use this simulation for a lot of different things, and one person doing CI/CD and uh, the cloud. And among our uh, two Unity developers, there was a discussion on the physics engine. And I can't tell you if it's still the original one, yes. um, but I think we, we kept the original one. Just because this is ease of use, this was just to prove the concept, mm -hmm. and we, now we're building upon it, so we might change it. And so we can say your solution is independent from Gazebo, right? Mm -hmm. We can run everything without Gazebo. Yeah, we don't, we don't use really Gazebo at all. So basically, Unity in this case substitutes Gazebo mm -hmm. and Argus. It's also, you can also yeah. visualize the sensors. In this case, you're only seeing the LiDAR. Uh, but you can end the positioning of the joints, for example, but you can visualize everything else. So we even have like a geodometry map, uh, uh, no, not geodometry, occupancy grid. We can also visualize it. It's, everything is included in the Unity Robotics Hub, and I really encourage people that don't know it, it's really a cool way to deploy robotic simulations. And they now have a ROS2 version, which is really <coughs> How did you get uh, virtual model? So you you imported the CAD models, or how did you how did you get into Unity? Mm -hmm. uh, they have a URDF importer, so mm -hmm. it already does I would say 70% of the work for you. But then you need to correct. So a lot, for example, TurtleBot, the gains and everything, and the distance among wheels and everything. So that it actively works well with the controllers. Mm -hmm. You also need to write the controllers in C sharp. Uh, some controllers are already there, like the velocity controller or like the basic ones. If you want something fancy, you need to write it in C sharp. Uh, but it's with the URDF importer that they provide. It's really good. Again, but the environment itself, you model it's um, basically the static environment. This one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this environment. Um, so we have a scan of our lab with uh, point clouds that we did a couple of years back. So we took that into uh, and our really good designers did it. So. <laughs> Uh, don't ask me exactly which software because I think it was a mixture of Blender and 3D Max. It's the nineties, but they based off the point cloud. Now you know, like these environments are always changing. If you go to our labs the day after, it's chaos in comparison. It's not chaos, but you have like robots running around and everything. So what we focused on was just really the placement of everything, so that when we have, for example, a turtle bot in here or in simulation, the map is mostly the same. So if you overlay both maps, they're really, really similar. Uh, we focus on that kind of thing, and then on it looking pretty. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Very good. Thank you so much. Once Thank more, Henry from uh, Accenture.